<laughs> you know something? I'm going to take you up on that. Oh, good. Oh, uh, uh, how old is your sociology professor? Oh, he's... Oh, well, he's not so... He's about 50. Oh, good. Then he's old enough to appreciate what I'm talking about, uh, what you're going to write about. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he is. And thanks for the idea, Mr. Nelson. I'm going to get started while I'm in the mood. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Oh! Where'd everybody go? Uh, well, uh, Brenda went upstairs to work on her paper, and I I'm afraid I talked Mike right out of the house. <laughs> oh, that's just as well. I'm pretty tired. Well, I, I guess I'll take this back to the kitchen. Oh, uh, here. That's kind of heavy. Let me help you with that. There we are. Mike's oh. a little lighter. <laughs> Shakespeare let his quill cool off once in a while. Yeah, but Shakespeare never had to write a paper for Sociology 1A. <laughs> How you doing? Pretty good, I think. I'm writing all about the American scene in the 20s and 30s. Yes, yeah, so I understand. That ought to be very interesting. The first radio, the first talkies, the stock market crash, the depression, the WPA. Yeah. Hey, how do you like this opening? The period that embraced the 20s and 30s was one never to be forgotten in the annals of our country. That's for sure. <laughs> True, the nation had its problems, but people had optimism, they had courage, they had vision. Yeah, they had everything except jobs. It was an exciting, vital time, filled with the confidence that there really was a rainbow in the sky. There was sadness, even tragedy, but mostly there was happiness, gaiety, and above all, a spirit of friendliness, consideration, and love. H have you done much research on this? Oh, no, I haven't had to. Mr. Nelson's been helping me. Oh. <laughs> Any deep thoughts coming? Yes, I have big cramp in left leg. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi. Hi, how was the game? <laughs> Not too good. Between the sand traps and the water hazards, I might as well have gone to the beach. <laughs> uh, uh, did Brenda get back yet? No, not yet. Why? Uh, well, it's been three days since she turned in the term paper, and I was just anxious to know whether we got an A plus or just an A. See, that's what happens when you're a good student. With me, no one expects more than a C minus, and so far I haven't disappointed anybody. <laughs> well, if you ever need any help, just call on the old professor. Oh, thanks. I may do that. Well, maybe you better wait and see how Brenda made out. Why, are you kidding? With her creative writing ability and my intimate knowledge of the subject, how could we miss? Oh, as he used to say in the old days, here comes Brenda now. Hey, oh. you, you've got it. Now, now, uh, did we get an A plus? Uh, we got an A. Uh, we got a B plus. Uh, we got a B? I have the feeling you're not dropping down fast enough. <laughs> we got a C? A D. We got it. She got a D. Birds, woodwork, white walls, too. Boats, golf clubs, even barbecues. Oh, I know you love me for your pots and pans, but there's a hundred other things I do. SOS, the number one selling soap ad in the USA. In 1943, the first room air freshener was invented, Airwick Liquid, and it's still unsurpassed in its ability to kill odors 24 hours a day. But now it comes in two new scents, like the fresh scent of lemon and the new rose-scented Airwick with a slight fragrance of fresh roses. It's nice to know that in all this time, to eliminate odors, Airwick Liquid is still the next best thing to fresh air in any scent. This, this really up 
fits me. Dinner's almost ready. Are you hungry? No, not especially. What's the matter? You're sick? No, I'm not. But Brenda's professor is. He's sick in the head. He's not only incompetent, but the man is definitely a smart... Watch I was going to say smart, Alec. What's <laughs> these snide comments? Writing okay, but ideas expressed are antiquated. Thoughts worthy of Calvin Coolidge. <laughs> Undue veneration of the past. Everything I told Brenda was true. For the most part, things were better in the old days. I mean, you could walk the streets at night without getting hit in the head. You could breathe the air without getting your lungs contaminated. Bathtubs were bigger. Ice cream wasn't pumped up with a bicycle pump. Automobiles were better. Automobiles were better? Well, at least when something went wrong with them, it didn't take an atomic scientist to fix them. See, what bothers me is he gave her a D, not because of her writing ability, because he didn't happen to agree with the ideas expressed here. Y you don't agree with me. Well, it isn't that. I just think you ought to let the girls do their own homework. They have to help the boys, and it worked out okay. In certain subjects, yes. <laughs> I never was very good at mathematics. Besides, after you've been out of school a while, you forget things like Roman numerals and algebraic equations. How about short division? <laughs> <laughs> I never had any trouble with short division. Long division, maybe. And physiology and anatomy. What about them? Remember the time you told Ricky a clavicle was a musical instrument? <laughs> <laughs> I was only kidding. Besides, don't you ever forget anything? No, and I wish you'd forget about Professor What's-His-Name and Brenda's term paper. Yeah, and leave you alone, let you finish fixing dinner. That, too. <laughs> I was wondering what happened to my paper. Oh, yeah, I found it on the desk here, and I, I took the liberty of reading it. I hope you don't mind. Oh, no. You know, a thought just occurred to me. Are you sure this professor, what's his name? Andrews. You sure he corrected this himself? I mean, that he didn't assign it to some jerky kid, some uh, associate professor? Oh, no, I'm sure he didn't. I know his handwriting. Uh, and you say he's a middle-aged man of supposedly mature judgment? Yeah, he's been in the department for almost 25 years. I can't understand these childish comments. Well, I wouldn't get too upset.